is we want to look at the change in y over the change in x. Because when you think about the slope, slope is like the rise over the run or the change in y over change in x. If it's linear, it's going to go up at a constant rate, meaning that that slope is going to be continuously the same. We don't want it to start off like this and then go like this and then go like that. That's going to be a different slope. Uh, and we want it to be a constant slope, the same slope. So what we're doing here is we're going to find out, well, it looks like the y's are going up by 2. 7 to 9, it looks like the y's are going up by 2. 9 to 11, the y's are going up by 2. Now we want to look at the change in x as well. So you can see that the x's are increasing by 1, by 1 again. 5 to 6, that's 1 again. So if we take 2 divided by 1, that gives us a slope of 2. 2 divided by 1 gives us a slope of 2, and 2 divided by 1 gives us a slope of 2. So you can see that it's always going up at that constant rate with a slope of 2. So if we want to write the equation, we would say to ourselves, okay, y equals mx plus b is the equation of a line, okay, a linear function, okay, constant slope. And what we're going to do is we know that the slope is 2 now, so we have y is equal to 2x plus b. Now we don't know the y-intercept, the b value, but we can pick one of the coordinates, say for example 3 comma 5, so when y is 5, x is 3, we can solve for b. So we have 5 is equal to 6 plus b, subtract 6 from both sides, and you can see that b is equal to negative 1. You just put the negative 1 back into the equation and you've got it. So it's y equals 2x minus 1. Of course, if you want to check your work, you can always pick another uh, coordinate. Say, for example, if x is 6, 2 times 6 is 12, minus 1 is 11. Okay, it checks out, right? Okay, let's go to number 2 now. Is this one linear or nonlinear? Well, let's take a look at the change in y over the change in x. So when we look at how the y's are changing, it looks like they're going up by 6. Here it's going up by 10. 21 to 35, it's going up by 14. When we look at the change in x, it looks like it's going up by 1, 2 to 3 it's going up by 1, 3 to 4 it's going up by 1. But when we look at the change in y over the change in x, right, so here it's going up by 6, when the, y's, uh, when the x's are going up by 1, that's the slope of 6. But when we look at over these two points here, it's going up by 10 in the y direction, when the x's are going up by 1, that's the slope of 10. You can see uh, 6 does not equal 10, which means it's not going up at that steady constant rate, which means that this one is going to be nonlinear, okay, meaning not a straight line. Okay, last example, number 3. See if you can do this one. Let's look at the change in y. It looks like the y's are going up by 2, then they're going up by 1 here, then they're going up by 2 here. Now, it's okay that they're not going up at this, the same for each one. What we're interested in is, is the change in y over the change in x. Is that slope the same? So here it's going up by 6, here it's going up by 3, here it's going up by 6. If we take the change in y over change in x, we're getting 2 6, 1 3rd, and 2 6. But you can see that 2 6 reduces to 1 3rd. Okay, so we have 1 3rd equals 1 3rd equals 1 3rd. So this is actually going up at a constant rate of, with a slope of 1 3rd. So this is linear. If we want to write the equation of this linear function, this line, we're going to take our y equals mx plus b. We know our slope is 1 3rd, but we have to solve for that b value, that y-intercept. So let's pick one of the points here, 0 comma 2. So if you put 2 in for y and 1 in, uh, sorry, 0 in for x, we can solve for b. 1 3rd times 0 is 0, so you can see b is equal to 2. So if we put the 2 back in to our equation, we've got it. So y equals 1 3rd x plus 2. And that's the equation of our line. Now, when x is equal to 0, you know, when you think about it, you're not going left or right. You're just going up and down along that y-axis. So really, we knew that the y-intercept was 2 in this particular example, but just to show you how to do it algebraically. So great job. If you like the, my teaching style, you like the way that I approach these math concepts, consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, I've got uh, hundreds of videos now on my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel, helping you with all different concepts so that you can raise your grade, pass your class, pursue your dreams, and hopefully make learning math a lot less stressful. So I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.